Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Just Create. I am super excited about this next episode. I'm telling you guys, this is something I've been uh, I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, something I've been uh, was really anxious about, excited about, all the above, all those feelings that you get when you bring on a new a new guest, but bring on a guest that really has really uh, impacted you uh, personally, or as in me personally. And so uh, I reached out to, I, I kind of alluded this to earlier, but I reached out to uh, this amazing individual and uh, his story, his actions, his words is something that uh, I think uh, everyone should have, if you not have heard of him, definitely will want to uh, follow and uh, uh, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. So without further ado, guys, uh, I want to introduce you to Tyler Harris. How you doing, my friend? I, if I was any better, I hate those cliches. I was about to, I was about to throw a cliche yeah. on there and I hate when people say that. And so I'm just going to stop myself. I am doing fantastic. Oh man. That, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I am the king of cliches. I love yeah, cliches. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's the most corniest <laughs> stuff that we could do, but you know, it's just, uh, it's a good time. But just to kind of uh, tell everyone tyler you you uh, you are the content king you are an mm -hmm. entrepreneur influencer you run successful businesses in the life insurance uh world uh yep. per se but uh you also created uh, just say a a, a, a a quote unquote legacy when it comes to uh, content creation. Um, you are the uh, creator of the Breadwinner podcast, Sales Wolves podcast, a vlog called My Legacy. And uh, my Living, my my living, living legacy. legacy. Yes. Yep. yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's your message that you bring to to millions and millions of people is is just absolutely amazing so i love the fact that everything that yet you do it really embodies everything about this show so without awesome. further i would love for you to kind of tell everyone your story your little backstory and how you really got started in this really become this sensation i mean it, it's not just that but like there's there's so much power to it and it's just love to have people know who you are and how you got started Awesome, man. And I, and I think there's no better segue in that little correction on my vlog. Uh, it's called My Living Legacy. When a lot of people talk about legacy, I, I want to talk about living legacy. And, and what do I mean by that? So I mean, uh, a lot of people talk about the legacy that you leave for your family, right? right? And the problem with that is that's all past tense. That means that I'm gone, right? Like that means that I'm dead <laughs> because we're talking about the legacy that was left behind. But when you talk about a living legacy, you start talking about the legacy that, you, that you're leaving in your family. And that's why you're still here. That's why you're, pre that's why you're present. And so that's why it's called my living legacy, because it's talking about what can I do uh, to impact the world, uh, to impact individuals while I'm still here. Uh, not when I'm gone. And so I think that's that's an important uh, distinction and a good framework probably for this whole conversation. But um, we can we can take it back uh, just four and a half years ago. And I think it's important um, with that timeline because everything that I do on a day to day basis uh, today is based on remembering four and a half years ago very, very well. <laughs> it's not, I'm not so far removed that I, that I forget what it was like, but four and a half years ago, I was flat broke. I was in debt, um, out of shape, overweight. Um, let's see. Um, I was depressed. I was, I mean, you name it. I was just winning in all areas of life, uh, at a, on a, on a grand scale. Uh, but you know, life had happened to me. I had, I'd had some successes early on in life and then I had a business failure. Uh, I had a marriage failure and just things kind of, uh, compounded to putting me in a bad spot. And Ultimately, I had one of those cliche, uh, look yourself in the mirror, kind of taking ownership moments. But for me, it was realizing that uh, everything was my fault, that I was exactly where I was because of the decisions that I had made, because of the things that I had done. And, you know, I used to get a lot of pushback when I came to that realization because of the stuff with the marriage. You know, my, my wife had had an affair, which ultimately led to, to our marriage ending. And, and guys especially, they'd be like, man, it wasn't your fault. You know, that wasn't your fault. And I'm like, well, you know, let's think about that. So, you know, if I had been the absolute best husband, created the absolute most ideal environment, you know, in our household, would that affair have still happened? Maybe, but probably 
probably not. Um, and and I think I've gotten a lot of pushback even here recently on some posts that I've done about this this idea that things are all your fault. Um, and what I want to clarify in that before we move forward is that you know there are certain things that happen to people, right? Like, right. you know, natural disasters and a house is destroyed, um, you know, an assault or rape type environment. Um, you know, any of the things that, that can happen to a child. Um, no, those aren't your fault. 100% those aren't your fault. Like if something happened to you as a child, um, that, that was not your fault. However, allowing it to still control your life 20, 30, 40 years later, is your fault. And that's all about mindset. And I realized that I had been playing the victim for about a two year period of time. So I went through that business failure, marriage failure, and was just completely content with saying, Oh, these things happened to me. Oh, if my, if that would have, if that wouldn't have happened, if this business, if this wouldn't have happened, then, you know, I'd be in a different place and really was just using that as an excuse to be lazy. Uh, but finally took ownership realized that everything was my fault. And the encouragement that I, that I understood in that moment was that if I got myself into the position, you back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about yeah. that. It's yeah. It's all right. If I got myself into the position that uh, I was in, then I could get myself out of it. Um, but I knew that the only thing that would make that happen was work. And so, um, from there i had met some mentors right around that same time, coincidentally, probably not coincidentally, but I had some mentors come into my life and they really breathed confidence back in me after going through a business failure to going through a marriage failure, especially when there was, you know, adultery involved, um, that can really affect a man's, uh, confidence level and ego and all of that. Um, they, they were involved in a, uh, business, uh, in the insurance world. And I, and I kind of jokingly say if they were in the rubber band business, I'd probably be sitting here in front of you as, as building a, a rubber band empire, but they were in the insurance business. Uh, they gave me an opportunity and that's really what I needed. I needed an opportunity. I was hardworking. Uh, I just needed a vehicle to plug into, uh, that I could turn that hard work ethic, uh, into at, in my case at that point cash. Um, and so I got involved in the business with them, put my head down, went to work. Um, 12 months later, I made over 300 grand in uh, commissions and that's from being flat broke. I borrowed the money to get involved in the business with them. Uh, 12 months later, over 450, 12 months later, over 650, and then became now partner uh, of that insurance agency and have launched another sense um, to get to that millionaire, uh, you know, whatever cliche, like uh, quote unquote status um, all over the last four and a half years. Uh, but I think the most important thing that we'll probably spend the remainder of this uh, interview <laughs> talking about is two years ago, almost to the day, um, I, I realized that the biggest mistake that I had ever made was not documenting that process of going from being flat broke, uh, to the level of success that I had attained at that point. Right. But I knew, I knew the second biggest mistake would be not to start there. And so I began just documenting my life on social media, uh, two years ago, almost to the day. And it has been a wild ride ever since it's been the most impactful, uh, period of time in my life. And so on top of the crazy schedule of running two agencies and selling tons of life insurance, um, we've built a personal brand and a couple other brands on top of it and have, you know, truly, I, I believe made an impact, uh, on the world and continue to do so as, as that primary goal. And, uh, and that kind of brings us where we are today. When you talk about content King, it's just a, a period of, of, uh, constantly trying to push the envelope of what's, uh, of what's possible, what might reach somebody differently than, than, uh, than one piece of content versus the other and just constantly evolving that process to reach more and more people. Wow. It's, that was, a <laughs> well, you're exactly right on the fact about the impact that you have made. Um, Thank I, you. I, I did a post recently saying that, and this is really true. Like I'm not a, a raw, raw type of guy. I don't really buy in not, not that I don't think it, they're, they're there they're, they they do help out people but the Gary V's the Tony Robbins the 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 you know the the Casey Neistat's uh it, they are fun to, to listen to but they're not, for me personally they're not ones that uh motivationally move me you know or or sure. or drive me to cuz I feel like I already have like this drive right of I want to get better I want to do more and I and mm -hmm. and I want to create um so their words are not ones that although they're very good they're they influence a lot of people. It's not one for me. And, but when I hear you speak and when I hear you share, there's just something that is 
I, I, that I, it connects. It absolutely mm-hmm. connects. And there's a lot of different things that connects. And then that's what we kind of want to talk about is number one, your message, but the way that you do your content, it's so different than, than others. It's not your typical selfie walking style content. You <laughs> actually have a extremely well-produced shows and it's just awesome to see. It's refreshing to see as a video production or as a creative director it is so refreshing to see that something different than what's out there right now that's really let's be over being oversaturated in, in a very oversaturated market of being an influencer and that type of thing but hey man i want to stop you there and, and i apologize for interrupting but i think there's something really important that you said there and and it was the reason from the very beginning why i started this process of documenting is i saw this gap and let's take the average american um, that makes between you know fifty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. If they want to go online specifically to social media to learn something, to grow, uh, just to be motivated, inspired, there were really only two people that they had to go to. One of them was the multi multi millionaire, like a Gary Vee, like a Tony Robbins, like a Casey Neistat. That's lifestyle and infrastructure that they've built around themselves is unrelatable. It's incredible, but it's unrelatable to that to that average American. There was that, and then there was the second, which was the person that was faking like they're that. Right. And there was really nowhere in between. And so what I wanted to do was, having gone from being flat broke to 300 to 450 in income, I found myself in this small window of time where I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to capture as much as I possibly can, as quickly as I possibly can, because my plan obviously was to keep leveling up and leveling up and leveling up. And while I can still be relatable and I can still talk about the things that, that I've been going through and the struggles and give people this real look at what it, at, at what it's, at what it takes to be successful and not just this like, Hey, you know, become you know rich in six months and yeah. read my, read my book and, you know, be wealthy and all this stuff that I could, um, to show people and take them on this, on this journey with me. And as I level up, the goal was ideally to bring people with me, to give them the tools that they could level up in their lives as well. But at the very least, when I got there to where, you know, the Gary V's, the Tony, Rock, all those people, when I got there, that I would still be relatable because people saw the whole process. They saw every step of the way as I got wow. there and I would have all this video footage of me. It's basically like if Gary V had the ability to do what we're doing right now, you know, right. 15, 20 years ago. Um, and, and the, the story that he would be able to, to tell now. So that was that gap that I saw, which is exactly, you know, kind of what you said is like that, that, that maybe that story resonated with you more than Absolutely. the Gary V story. Cause you know, Gary V has 22 people just in his personal circle working on his stuff in an 800 man agency to, to put, to push it out. It's just a different, it's just different. Yeah. This doesn't make it any better. It's just different. It is. You're, you're exactly right. And and so my question for you, kind of going back to where you made that conscious decision. How first of all, how did you have the 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 vision and the forthright to to know that this is what you want to document? But but what how did you make that conscious decision and commitment that I am going to document everything, especially when let's face it. They, I mean, I guarantee there was no support. <laughs> no one knows what you're right. doing. Right. Uh, people didn't know, have no idea. My friends, my family, the, 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 the closest people to me probably like, why are you doing a show? You are not one to do a show. You, you, are, <laughs> you have no talent whatsoever. Why are you doing a show? And it's like, I'm just doing it because I want to, you know, but yeah. like what, what got you to, or how, what uh, allowed you or what, what made you make that conscious decision and commitment to start documenting every single step of the way of that process? Why and how, and you know, that type of thing. So, you know, speaking of Gary V, like I, I had consumed every bit of content that he had put out over that two years um, as I was kind of growing and leveling up um, privately. You know, I consumed everything. So like Ask Gary V was like, right. that was that like was my huge. jam. Like when <laughs> Daily V came out, that was like Daily V, that unlocked, I mean, that that to me was uh, pretty life changing. And his intent behind it became my intent behind my daily vlog and, and a lot of that. And so, you know, I saw I saw what he was doing and I just believed in it. But it's one thing to believe in something and to actually do it. Um, cause it's not, it's not easy. And especially for, I'm, I'm introverted. Um, 
big time. And so like doing stuff like this was not comfortable. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't in my nature. Um, I went to the launch of the Ask Gary V book and uh, he did it at Andy Frisella um, at his okay. factory in his warehouse. He did, they did a big event where they both spoke and my business partners and I uh, paid for this VIP uh, deal to be able to speak with them for like an hour afterwards. So we went to this event Afterwards, it was me, my two business partners, three other people that we didn't know that at all also paid. Um, we go in this conference room. So it's the six of us, Gary and Andy. We basically, they said we had an hour just to sit there and talk about anything, anything on our mind. We ended up sitting in there. We got, didn't get in there till like 11 PM. Uh, didn't walk out of there till like three o'clock in the morning. Oh, uh, so we spent like three and a half, four hours sitting there talking to them and it was incredible wow. and it was awesome to see Gary in that environment and Andy, um, as being the same person that I had watched on, on video and, and listened to on, on audio for, for two years. Um, in that meeting, you know, kind of telling my story, what had happened over those two years is when Gary kind of had that, um, message that he's put out so many times that, mm -hmm. that basically I was looking for permission. And that I didn't need anybody's permission that I needed to go tell my story because it was one that was worth telling. He's like, man, are you, are you going to be on the road, you know, 238 nights, you know, again next year? Because that prior year, it was 238 nights in a hotel. I was like, yeah, probably. He's like, you got to tell that story. Like, you have to tell the story about what you're doing. It's like, people need to hear it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So even coming out of that, um, you know, fired up. Yeah, let's do it. I still, you know, had reservations. And so... I took the I took that time to rebrand our insurance agency and put it uh, finally online and start building a brand around it on social and uh, and did very well with that. Um, it was a good time based on kind of some stuff that was going on um, uh, socially in the U.S. at the time, but okay. built built our Facebook page to like over 200,000 in like a matter of like six months and, uh, Instagram blew up and, and it's still, it's it just crushes. And so really focused on that. And then finally realized that I needed to finally put myself out and, and here's what it all boils down to. I've only had probably, I mean, really two times in my life where I've felt like I have audibly heard God speak to me. And, and this may sound crazy to some people, but one of those times was when I was in the gym on a treadmill uh, in Georgia. And I just had this like audible, just like, you know, word from God that I needed to start, start telling my story and I needed to start documenting it. And I've got a video on my phone that I've played a couple of times, like some throwback Thursday type, type footage of leaving the gym. And I walked out and I got in my car and hit record and just started talking and I started, it got super emotional. My wife and I had just decided we were going to start, you know, trying to have a child and it was, and I had gone th from this period of being literally flat broke to like over four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in income, which is like it's crazy. Yeah. Just like the the change that you can go through in such a short period of time, and um, just responsibilities and just the things that were going on in my life. But that I made this commitment to start, you know, documenting the story, and I did that privately uh, for a number of months. And so I've got just tons of videos that I've never seen the light of day, uh, on my phone, on my computer. And then finally just got up the audacity to, to put it out there. And so I can remember like it was yesterday, um, just put this post out and just talked about the fact that like, Hey, over the last two years, I've been extremely quiet. Like I didn't even change my Facebook profile, like my job title. Like I didn't even change that. Yeah, I no, just didn't talk about what I did. No updates. Just had my, yeah. Just, <laughs> just had my head down and went to work. Um, and honestly, I look back at that period of time and I wonder, you know, would that been a, would that have been a distraction that would have prohibited me from having the success that I had had in such a fragile period of time during this kind of transformation? I don't know the answer to that. Um, but all I know is from there forward, uh, I started putting out content at scale and, uh, yeah, it was extremely uncomfortable. Uh, I think 90 seconds after the first post I did, my wife called me crying and she was mortified. She was like, what in the world was that? Um, because she was, ex she's extremely humble, private right. and talked about, you know, the income that I was making at that time. And she knew our friends would see that. And that just kind of mortified her. And, and I told her, I was like, look, I, I, I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, I've got a good idea. Cause again, I'd watched, you know, Gary V uh, for two years, explain the importance of it and, and somewhat of how, of the nuts and bolts of, of how to do it, but mainly just the intent behind doing it. I said, you know, you may want to unfriend me, unfollow me, uh, maybe even block me, uh, but I'm going to do this for a few months 
and, and I'm going to see what happens. And, uh, and I need your support in that. And so she did. And, and it wasn't uh, long after that where I started getting messages from people and they were like legit life changing stuff. Like, Hey, I, you said this on this post the other day and man, it really affected me. And, and since then this, this, and this has happened and, and it's, uh, it's been life changing. And every time I would get a message like that, I would take a screenshot and I'd text it to my wife or, you know, I traveled a lot. And so like when I was home on the weekend, I would show her like all these messages and, and she started to slowly, 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 slowly understand. Um, but now she's, you know, fully obviously on board, but, uh, but you're right, man. Like nobody got it. Like my friends, I was, I was felt very alienated at the time. Um, you know, no, my business partners, my other family, like my parents, my sister, like no one, no one got it. Um, and, and I'd love to, to tell you that I, that looking back on that period of time, that, that it, it's just so clear that like, you know, I just, I knew it and like I had a plan and I just stuck to it. But honestly, like, I don't know what it was, man. Like, I don't know what it was that kept me doing it. Um, but it's, it's the one thing in my life, not the one thing that's terrible. It's one of the things in my life that I am just so incredibly grateful for having stuck with against all, against like all odds, like against all opposition, against everyone telling me that like it was ridiculous against people making fun of me. I had a friend that was recording videos of himself pretending to be me, you know, sending them to other friends of mine that I found out about. Like, I mean, that's what friends do, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean like just tons and tons of stuff that like, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, but it's, uh, it's, it's truly been the single most important decision that I've ever made. And, uh, there's no turning back. Like once you start getting those messages about the impact, uh, that it's, that it's making, it's highly addictive and it's just something that you want more and more and more of and becomes more and more real. And then you start to scale things and they just start happening faster and faster. And then people ask like, well, you know, what, what kind of drugs is Gary V on? Like, how does he have this much energy? How is he able to go, go, go? And, and then you think like, yeah. These messages that I'm getting, you think of him getting thousands of them a day, how you wouldn't just hit the ground, you know, in a dead sprint with your hair on fire every day. Right. Uh, so it's, it's sense. been, uh, it's been awesome. What would you say? What was the, what was, uh, did you start this documentation when you first started? Was it because, was it for you or was it for, uh, for the idea of just, you want to create it and, and it, it to help you through this you know, improving yourself or was it because, or was it, f and needless to say, and, and, I don't, and this may sound bad, but for the notoriety, not, not necessarily try to get as, as much, you know, have everyone look at you and give you all the great accolades, sure. but like, but you know, to help out people to, to, to have people say, if there was that one person that they get my message, then it's been all worth it. Like what was the, what was the driving force towards that? Was it that started off with you and then it turned into that or was it, you know, it actually, so it's interesting, you know, I've never really thought about it in, to that specific degree, but I think I, it started off just to do it for other people. Okay. But then it quickly, I quickly realized that it was just as much for me, if not for others. Um, which I think a lot of people say, you know, I started off doing this for me and then realize other people benefited. I started it with the full, like I had a full like mission to help other people from day one. Um, never realizing how much I would help myself in the process. Um, so I'm I think so that's probably glad. like that, that, that is powerful. That's a powerful statement. It's a, I think that's a very humble, like people don't think that's, that, that takes humility. That takes a lot of sure. humility to be able to uh, use that response because it really embodies what this show is about. I really believe that we are called, and I said this on my last show, is that we are created to create and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. for us, although we are going to receive, you're a very faith-based man. I could tell in yep. some of your talks and, and, and so am I. And so, um, so there is, there is that element that's involved with it, but I really do believe that by, creating something for for the greater good for other people to be able to help for other people to benefit from it just gets returned in full and so you can only give with what you can only was it you can only give with what you receive right and so it's that circular yeah. motion and so yep. um I, I i i hearing that response number one i think it takes a lot of humility and then number two is is exactly reason why 
I think a lot of people need to kind of have that mindset of create something, whatever it is, if it is something to do with, with like what you're doing or with what I'm doing, or if it's just writing a, a blog or, or, you know, <laughs> right. Drawing paintings, whatever it is, sure. you, we have to tap into whatever it is that you're passionate about. We have to tap into that in order to really find out what our, what we're here for, what our meaning is, right. You sell life insurance, but that's not what you're here for. You're here to change people's lives by, sharing your message and understanding that there's there is so much greatness out there and within someone's self that you know this is how i did it if you want to be able to walk that road with me this is how i'm going to show you how to do it am, am, am i far off absolutely base like no not and not to make this literally like a church sermon but <laughs> but like i mean you know the the second time that i that i've ever felt like I've heard directly from God and this one was way more stronger than the first. I was driving up. Um, it was a Friday afternoon. Uh, my wife's from Asheville, North Carolina. She had gone up there to visit her family and I was going to go after, after works. So we had some webinars that day and, and I was heading up there and, uh, you go through the mountains to get to Asheville, North Carolina from, from South Carolina. And, uh, there's always this little area that I lose service on my cell phone. And, and so, um, I had, I had been through a particular, like just kind of, a. uh, difficult few weeks, uh, just struggling with, yeah. you know, my purpose and kind of what I was supposed to be doing in regards to, you know, the insurance industry and the, the different, uh, daily and weekly tasks that I was really responsible with. I mean, was I born to do this? Was, is this what I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life? Kind of, kind of questions that a lot of people go through. And, and, uh, so I started praying and, and, you know, it wasn't the, the pretty, like, you know, hands crossed, like on your knees, pray. It was like the, like I was crying yeah, the, and the like, ugly, the ugly, cry, like right? the ugly, <laughs> ugly cry, ugly praying. And, uh, and literally I just, I, I said, I t so what happened is I got to that area where I lost service and I had texted my wife, um, asking her, uh, we were going to be grilling out and I had asked her, I was like, Hey, do you need me to stop and grab some beer? And, um, and she was like, yeah, she's like, uh, and she said something, I said, or tequila. And she said, both it's been a, or she said, or I said, or both, uh, it's been a you know crazy day. And so I kind of got to that area where I'd lost service on my phone and, and I was praying and I, and I was like, it's very direct and, and saying, God, like, I need you to, I need you to show me, like, I need, I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing. Cause you know, I was in the process of helping start a church at the time. I'm documenting all this stuff on social media. I'm working 16, 18 hours a week, you know, with or a week, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, <laughs> working 16 to 18 hours uh, a day of the insurance business. There's so much going on, but like, I God, I need you to show me like right now, like I'm so confused. Like I just need to know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Like show me right now now. And like, as I said, right now, I had just come up on the other end of the mountain and my service came back on my phone. Oh, and I'm no like, way. I need you to show me right now. And then my phone goes off. I looked down at it and it was my wife texting me back in the context of her, of, of her text message was, you know, I'd said like, or should I get beer and tequila? Uh, it's been a long day. And she was basically saying like, tell me about it. It had been a long day for her too, but she said the word preach. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, I need you to show me exactly, like, tell me right now exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Phone goes off and I look down and it says preach. Wow. And I'm like, um, come again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the interesting thing was it wasn't that far fetched in the, in the fact that we were, we were building a church, not building a church. We were helping start a church, like yeah. an extension campus of uh, elevation church out of Charlotte. Uh, we were starting a Greenville, um, campus and, and at some point there was going to have to be a pastor of that church. Like, so it wasn't like a crazy, <laughs> crazy far-fetched thing. What I learned over the course of the next really six months is that it didn't say be a preacher. It said preach. And that you can preach from any platform. It doesn't have to be up on stage at church. You can preach from, I don't know, Facebook Live. Yep. You can preach from Instagram. You can preach from a podcast. And it's just putting out a message with the intent to impact others. And, and so like, I think about that every single day that this is what I was born to do and this is what I'm supposed to do. And that creates this like deeper, deeper responsibility that I feel like I have, uh, just to put this message out there. And, uh, and we're trying to do that 
you know, in, in greater and greater and greater ways every day. You are. And that kind of leads us to, to the next uh, thing I kind of want to take us into um, is, is, is more on that creation side, the creative side, the, 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 the commitment you do, because <laughs> I know the number and you mentioned this um, in one of your, uh, the, one of the most recent vlogs, but uh, um, how much content have you created from that, from, from doing that one video, how much content have you now created a pieces of content? Yeah. So over, over the last two years, there's been 4,000 individual pieces of content just on Facebook. Um, wow. and that doesn't, and that doesn't, that doesn't include the 167 episodes of the daily bread, which is the daily blog. It doesn't include the 35 episodes of my living legacy or however many episodes, no, not 35. Um, on that one, we were on episode like 12 and then the, I think now we're at 40 something on breadwinner podcasts. We're at 90 to this morning. We just recorded episode 96 of the sales wheels podcasts. Uh, that doesn't include any of that. Um, yeah, just individual posts and videos and lives. And I mean, it's, 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 crazy it's a, it's an insane amount of content no that it is an insane <laughs> i'm a i'm a video production agency and i don't think i have that much content it's 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 absolutely amazing but it's it is um uh it as coming from the side of what it takes to create that content is um there's just so much respect that i have and and the respect i have the the, the commitment that you make so for people that are starting off their businesses and want to be able to share their story, at what point did you say, now I'm going to make the investment into leveling up and take it from me doing my own videos to where I am now hiring? And because, you know, you, you've basically invested a mm -hmm. team to help you with your content and uh to help produce it right um mm -hmm. to shoot it and then edit it and put it out there because uh, i'll tell you what man there we would we were at that uh, meltdown in the desert uh yep. uh conference and i swear to god it was like the next day you already had content from that thing and i'm like i just got home and i want to like relax <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> this guy's already got it up and running like it's it's amazing how fast and how quickly you do your turnarounds that's a commitment itself no matter how many people you have on your team but I'm just saying, like, what? When did you make that investment, and then, and 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 why? So I mean, I th I think the important thing for people to know, especially the people that are listening to this, and they're like, well, you know, uh, that's that's crazy. Like, I can't I can't do that. Um, it didn't start out that way. Like, it started out. Uh, I wanted to focus. The reason why my following is bigger on Facebook um, for the time being than Instagram or any of the other platforms is because I wanted to do live content. And so Facebook Live became a huge part of uh, the content that I was putting out. I did over, I did over 400 Facebook Lives um, that first year. So that was last year, 2017. And I wanted to do the live content because you can only fake it for so long on live, right? Yeah. So like my whole, the whole intent behind everything was to show people like the real story in authenticity, transparency. I just knew that live had to be the way to do it. Also, like one of the big pillars that, that I just believe in is, um, is embracing discomfort and it was very uncomfortable to do stuff live. Like it just is. And so I wanted to do more of that and just knew that that would be a growing process to go through. Um, and then at that time, Facebook was the only place where you could do live content. Um, I started doing some stuff on, uh, what was it called? Uh, what was that live streaming? Not Meerkat, but Periscope. Oh yeah. <laughs> doing a little bit of that. Um, so this is before Instagram had live, then Instagram right. went to where it just went away. Then now, you know, 24 hours, which is great. Um, but I love the fact that on Facebook Live it's there forever. They can keep it. That is nice. Um, so that's what that that's where I started building everything was there. And then the posts that I would do, I mean, I was doing like three to six posts a day, uh, sometimes more. And you know, it's funny, it was just me just like trying to figure this thing out. I'm a creative person, but I don't have any creative skill sets. Like I don't, I don't know graphics, like I don't know, you know, like premiere right. final cut right. like i don't know photoshop all these things but i can work a freaking iphone like a master <laughs> and like i can use multiple apps 
to create pretty stinking professional looking photos that look like they were done professionally by, you know, someone with a graphics background. And so I quickly just started looking through like all the different apps that were out there and I would take a photo and put it through this app to do this to it, you know, this effect or filter. Then I put it on this app to add, you know, a quote to it. Then I put it on this app to do this to it and then animate it with this app and, you know, put this stuff up. Um, I'm ashamed, you know, not really ashamed, but I probably shouldn't say, you know, that I did the majority of this while driving. Um, but I did. <laughs> no judgment I over all, here. I get yelled at by my kids all the time. So I was yeah, always the in the phone. car. Like my, my wife's, um, number one fear used to be that she was going to be able to watch me die in a car wreck <laughs> live on Facebook because I was constantly doing them is cause I spent so much time in the car and, uh, and traveling. So uh, but you know, that's, I think an encouragement is that, uh, you know, for the person just just looking to start out, like you can build this all by yourself, um, using the tools like an iPhone, um, and, and the content, uh, creation that you can do there. So, you know, when did that change? It was really going into, I, so I pretty much did all that all of 2017, wow, uh, posting everything myself. I didn't use any, um, like Hootsuite and things like that just cause, I felt like um, they weren't treated right in the algorithm that they wanted it to be organically posted. I would schedule stuff on Facebook um, if I could possibly sit down for enough time to get a couple of them in advance. <laughs> uh, the Facebook lives I would do, they weren't like these thought out, you know, scripted deals. I used it as accountability. And I think that's an important um, lesson uh, for the people listening. You have to remain focused on the main focus, right? Like you the have to focus the main thing. The main, the main, yeah. Main like, thing. like yeah. what's bringing in income? Like you can't let that slide just because now you want to build a personal brand. And so I used Facebook live as an accountability tool. Typically I would, I would hit the road, um, to the territory that I would sell in, uh, Sunday night and I'd come back Thursday. So Sunday night, I'd usually put a goal out for my week. And then throughout the week, I would hop on Facebook live a couple times a day, especially at the end of the day and kind of recap my day tell people where I was at towards my goal for the week, do that each, each day of the week. And by the end of the week, uh, I would have people messaging me saying like, Hey man, I know you're going into your last day. Your goal was to do a hundred policies. I think you were at like 78. The last I heard, you know, we're rooting for you. I hope you get those, you know, 22 you need. And I'm sitting there like, this is a stranger yeah. like saying he's rooting for me. And it's like this crazy giant law of attraction. And <laughs> by the end of the week, I would lo and behold, almost hit my goal exactly each time. Cause I'm sitting here talking about that goal all week long. And so it was enable. And then I would try to add like a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a lesson on the end of those, those, uh, those videos, but it was very informal, nothing structured. No, not, I didn't even notes. So there was a time period where I had like this little dry erase right. board in my car. <laughs> where I would like try to jot down, like, make sure you talk about this, this, and this, but like, it just wasn't very effective because again, I was driving. And, um, so they weren't like some eloquently spoken, like they were terrible and people weren't getting on them. Like there was not a lot of people getting on this content. Like my mom, random dude from high school, coworker, you know, like random people would start popping on there, uh, but just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, and doing it, and doing it, and doing it. So as we got towards the end of 2017, I realized that, you know, we needed to, to increase the quality. Um, we had brought on at some point in there, a graphic designer, um, that we needed for both our business and we could use for content creation. Um, he started helping me create just some more, um, some more professional looking posts. Um, but still he was just creating those and then sending them to me. And then I was creating the ca the captions and, gotcha. and, and doing the posting, um, going into 2018, uh, really after, you know, being just obsessed with daily V, you know, Gary V's vlog, uh, daily vlog and being able to see just like behind the curtain, uh, of what his life was like and wanting to show people the same, you know, in, in my level or at my level, right. I had this idea of, of starting a daily vlog. And so, you know, randomly fa somehow found a videographer that it was the perfect time in their life to do something like this. He moved down from, he was living in Baltimore at time at the time and moved down to Greenville, South Carolina and started traveling with me 24 seven. And we started doing this daily vlog five days a week. And again, on a 24 hour turnaround, oh, uh, it was like a meltdown of the desert is 24 hour turnaround. Like, so we had to put out stuff the next day. Um, 
that was a crazy period of time. We did like a hundred, a hundred and almost 170 episodes of that. That's and in the beginning, like I didn't realize how involved I was going to be, but I started realizing how much I enjoyed the creative aspect of that. So like maybe one o'clock in the morning and TJ and I be in my hotel room and I'm sitting there like saying like, Hey, you know, let's make it to where the music doesn't come in until like right there when the beat <laughs> drops, like right when this happens and Started let's move the text. The <clears throat> I made the first like 50 thumbnails. Like I made them with an app on my phone. So he's like all professional doing all this stuff. And I'm over here making the thumbnail myself. Cause I was just controlling of it. And, uh, you know, coming up with the titles and the captions and like the flow. And it was absolutely craziness. Like he literally, and, and here's another good lesson for everyone listening. I sell life insurance. So for the person out there that's thinking to themselves, like, well, I, you know, what I do isn't that interesting. I sell life insurance. There's nothing more, there's nothing less interesting than selling life insurance. And I never, you know, really talked specifically about what I did day in and day out. It's more about the key pillars right. of success and regardless of what your industry or, or business is, um, it was kind of universal. Um, but literally TJ would be in my car and I would go into my meetings. I would come out a couple hours later and he was just like editing on his MacBook in my car all day long. And then we would go back to the hotel. We would look at kind of the rough draft of what he had. I would, you know, say, let's change this, 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 and this. We'd go get a workout in and we'd come back and he'd kind of finish it up. And we try to put that out and just insane level of content that we we're putting out at that point and had the podcast, you know, the sales Wolves podcast was going on all 2017. Um, started the breadwinner podcast on top of that in 2018 and just really, man, it was just like, what more? Like, how can we provide more content? How can we provide different forms of content to reach different people? Uh, we started doing these breadcrumb videos, which were like one minute, like summaries of the previous day's daily bread. Yep, and like uh, we, started, we started putting those out and like, so just constantly trying to put out different types of content and see what people reacted to. And, um, just kind of building, building on itself. And, you know, now it's to the point where, you know, I'm sitting here now in my office, which is my studio and there's all this, there's so much equipment and <laughs> wires and stuff running around here that I have no idea what any of it is. It, uh, matter. Somehow, it works. Somehow it, it all makes the, <laughs> makes the stuff go. <laughs> well, that, and this is the other level that, I mean, that really kind of, um, I just have mad respect for, uh, and appreciate the, the commitment because you don't, <laughs> And you, you do this because you just want to help people. You literally, this is, this is <laughs> to put that much time, that much commitment, that much investment for what in return there, you know what I'm saying? Like, like as in monetary, as in, you know, like there's, there, there's, there's a lot of great benefits when we help out people. We kind of discussed that about already, but just the, the sheer amount of commitment is just absolutely money. Basically doing so much and not asking for anything is, is, uh, what the most, it's it's just a tremendous so like that i but the 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 quality of work that you're putting into um is what really um is what really kind of uh, it, it, uh re i relate to and 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 i just want to commend you on it because every single piece of content that you put out there even if it's just your instagram stories um it it looks and has the feel of like i took my time to put this together there was very, very specific. There was a, it's very, very creative and it's completely different. And, and, and this is where I'm kind of sort of my message is, is for people is that no matter where you're at, be purposeful on what you create and do the best that you can to be not necessarily be somewhat different, really so be somewhat mm -hmm. different in your creative style. You don't have to be the same guy that's walking down the hallway and holding a phone and talking and saying that you have six different ways to become a billionaire and you're shooting from an iPhone. I don't get that. Yeah. Like, like yeah. the quality needs to match your level of what you're pitching. Right. And so sure. the, the amount of investment and the amount of um, time that you put into making your work, like your, your guys' content highly, just extremely quality is, 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 is commendable and is pretty amazing. And so like, do you, what do you tell people with that? I mean, because there is a process. And so nobody, don't compare yourself to where you're at and where they're starting. But yeah. like, you know, when you made that commitment, like why was it important to you to make that commitment for that quality? It was, 
we, I love this term scaling impact. And so like, there was only so much I could do on my own. Um, and I knew to reach more people and to reach people in a more impactful way, the quality had to get better. I had the quantity down. <laughs> like you couldn't, we couldn't do more quantity. Like people were telling me like you're posting too much, which that's a whole nother story because I just don't agree that exists. Um, the, I really don't, I truly don't believe you can post too much. Uh, just because of the percentage of people that are actually seeing it. Right. Exactly. Um, that, that, that's a, that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah. I, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. But, um, and the people that are talking about posting too much, just don't post enough typically. <laughs> but, um, but the quality, like it, it had to, it had to, uh, it had to level up just as I felt like I was leveling up and this idea of scaling impact. Like we, we, my team and I would talk about it all the time. Like, like our ROI are those messages. Like anytime I get a message, I send it to the team. Anytime there's like significant comment about, you know, you know, I did a post last night that's gotten like 130 comments that are like just really deep comments. A lot of them. Um, anytime that happens, I'll screenshot and, and send it to the team because that's what we're, that, that's our return. Like, again, we don't monetize any of this stuff. Uh, we're not selling anything. There's never been anything that anyone's been able to purchase, uh, from me. And, and, and I take a lot of pride in that because it's very different and unique. Um, but you know, for the person that's getting started, um, leaders follow. And so I tried to find other people that were putting out incredible content and tried to emulate some of that. Like, in the very beginning, a lot of people like kind of got on me for, you know, this guy's trying to be Gary V, you know, this guy's trying to be just like Gary V. And, you know, it, it wasn't a, a specific, like he did this post, I'm going to copy right. that post, but it's impossible for you to consume someone's content for two, three years and not start to sound like him, yeah. you know? And, and like, you know, that's just is what it is. And quite frankly, his, his content was extremely uh, impactful and, and obviously uh, I mean, he always says like, don't, don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. And so I felt like that was a good business move to, to kind of uh, emulate some of the the content that he was putting out. Um, but then I knew I started to kind of, I needed to have my own kind of flavor to it uh, or my own right. spin to it. And so, you know, a lot of the things that we're doing now are just trying to find things that we're not seeing other places. Um, so looking at, you know, what all the other big name influencers are, are doing and saying like, well, how can we do something different? Like right now, these road to legacy videos that we're doing, um, the format every day is so different and we're always constantly trying to push the boundaries of what's possible, create, uh, creatively while meeting deadlines, you know, in such a quick turnaround and while meeting, you know, quantity yeah. specifications and the number of posts that we're doing. And, and that's a hard, you know, balance there. Um, I think once people get to that level, they'll, they'll certainly, um, you know, understand that there has to be a balance between, you know, um, perfection and quality. Like we're never shooting for perfection, but I'm never going to post something that I don't think was of high quality, um, uh, just for the sake of, saying that I post three times today. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I think that's an important, uh, distinction, but, but yeah, man, it's, uh, this social media world, like it's, it's always changing, always evolving, but we're trying to find the people that are doing the best and see how we can, you know, challenge that, how we can, uh, see if we can create something. We have meetings that are literally just like brainstorming meetings. Like, you know, one we had last week where I sat down and I was just like, Hey, I want to do something like this. We need to do a post that has, you know, something in the content that people will share to their stories. Like how can we get people to share my posts and their stories? Because I personally believe that no one's scrolling up and down on Instagram. They're only scrolling, scrolling. you know, right to left and in, in the stories. So I focus, like I love Instagram stories. It's one of my, my focuses. It's just where I like to consume content and where I like to create it to me. Everyone's Instagram story is their vlog. And if you treat it as such, it's pretty powerful. Um, but how can we get people to share the story? post to stories. And so looking at like doing things where, and then tagging people in it. So like looking at doing posts where there's like blanks, like the most confident person I know is, and then blank. Um, the person I've seen grow the most in 2018 is, and then blank to where they can share that post to their stories and then tag people in the blanks to shout them out. So it just gets so many more people to your content. Um, you know, little things like that are like, you know, little call, um, right now my main focus is call to actions. Like I just, it's, 
you know, not every post, but the majority of posts, if there's not a call to action on it, it's like worth, it's not even worth posting. Uh, so trying to figure out little calls to action, like put a hashtag in the comments to describe your day, you know, or like, you know, little things like that, other than just like saying like, you know, comment yes, if you agree, you know, trying to like have higher level calls to action, because the reality is like, I understand that when someone's scrolling through content that it's asking a lot to get them to just look at it, no less like it really no less comment and then potentially share it. Like that's a lot to ask somebody. And so you got to give them a reason why they're going to comment. Like to think someone's going to see something and it's just going to spark this creativity inside them to have to comment with some like, you know, how it affected them versus like asking them a legit question and having them respond to it. Um, you know, more like, you know, organic conversations happening within, within the post. Like that's where my head's at right now is trying to get more of that, uh, to happen. Dude, that was some amazing knowledge <laughs> that you just dropped there. And, uh, I, I thank you for that. That was, yeah. that was, that was amazing. So as we wrap things up here and I, I, I do want to just, uh, I'll t- take some time to say thank you, but, uh, um, what would your, what would be some last words that you would like to give out to people that are, three different people that that are starting that are using video in their businesses and want to grow. I mean, like basically what would be your message about doing this content creation? What would you encourage them if they feel depressed, if they feel like they're not where they want to be, what would, what would your message be to them too? So the, the biggest thing is for the person that's thinking about starting or just got started. Um, the main thing that I think people struggle with is this, who am I, uh, complex, this idea of like, who, who am I to be sitting on this, you know, podcast right now talking about content creation when I have zero background in graphics is zero really creative background whatsoever. Um, and only a two year track record of doing anything on social media and, and, and putting out creative content, you know, who am I to jump on a Facebook live when we get off of this and talk about entrepreneurship, you know, who am I to post, you know, three times a day and clog up my friends' news feeds. And, you know, who am I to think, who am I to think that I have anything to say worth listening to? Like that's legitimately someone is listening to this right now. And they're saying, who am I to think that someone is going to listen to what I have to say and that they're actually going to get something out of it. And I just, it's just gotten to this almost, almost weird sense of deep, deep responsibility that I literally believe someone is out there waiting for you to put your story out there, waiting to put a, put your message out there because your message is the only message that can, that can reach them. And, and that sounds weird. And the first time I ever heard anybody uh, reference, this was Ryan Mickler. Same here. Uh, I was about and to it was, say that. Yeah. it was at meltdown in the desert the year prior to, to this past year. So it was 2000, uh, s- uh, 2017. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Like that message, um, resonated with me, so, with me so much. And I talk about it all the time, like that there's someone out there that's literally sitting there waiting to hear the message that only you can deliver. And that, you know, Gary V could say it, Tony Robbins could say it, ET could get up and yell it like <laughs> that they could do all that, but it wouldn't really resonate with them because it wouldn't, for whatever reason, it wouldn't hit them. But the way you could deliver it, maybe in a not so eloquent way, maybe in a fumbling over your words way, but for whatever reason, it just caught them at just the right moment and just the right way. Uh, and it affected them in, in a way that, you know, possibly put them on a path towards, you know, a life changing decision that they have to make, or, or maybe just, it just caught them at a right time where they didn't go down a, a further downward spiral, uh, that they were potentially headed towards, uh, in their life. And when you start looking at it that way, um, it becomes very much of a responsibility to start putting, uh, the content out there. And so like the, who am I is very much a, who am I not to like, you know, who am I, you know, not to try to put out as much content as I possibly can. If I've seen the evidence that it can help people, um, why would I not put out more and more and more and more? Uh, and a lot of that just has to do with, with ego, um, and, and finally letting that ego aside and, and just doing this, you know, maybe for other people and not yourself and not caring if, you know, you do a Facebook live and, you know, you, you know, misused a word and you felt stupid and, you know, no one, like no one cares. Like no one, no one remembers a bad post 
Uh, it's a super important thing to remember. Like no one remembers a bad Instagram live. Like no one, like there's so much content out there. Like no one remembers this stuff. So, you know, who are you? You're someone that has a story to tell and there's someone out there that needs to hear it. Uh, and that's should be all, all the reason that you need, uh, to put it out there, but, um, to commit to doing it for at least six months as well. Um, you're not going to know in a month, you're not going to know even in three months, whether or not this is something that is going to serve you. But within six months, you'll have some feedback that'll, that'll fire you up and that'll keep you going beyond that. So if you can just commit to doing it, um, at scale, like posting three times per day for six months, then I promise you'll never stop. Uh, and it'll only get more and more and more impactful. Uh, but you need to give it at least six months because um, you need time uh, just for these things to work, uh, work themselves out and for people to be able to even find you to have these type of impactful conversations. Uh, but you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how quickly um, how quickly it'll happen, especially through video. And I think that's obviously the importance on this on this podcast is there's something special about video. I'm a very, very visual person. And so I understood this very quickly because it's the it's really the only way that I um, um, what's the word um, uh, absorb to absorb, to absorb to learn, information and, yeah, yeah uh, it starts with a re re something information Relate, retain retain retain, retain yeah. yeah it's like the only way I retain information like I've I've often even gone as far as saying like you know you've got that the the app uh, Audible. I wish they'd make yeah. one called visible <laughs> that literally was just like an author reading his book. Bro, like, I, think I don't even need it. I think you just came yeah, up with yeah, a new right. business plan. <laughs> I don't think there's many people like me <laughs> as I think, Maybe but, so. uh, but like not even acting it out, just literally the, the, just by engaging my eyes to it and, and my ears, it helps me retain it. And it's like, that's why daily V was so huge for me. Um, is because I'm watching and I'm learning. I'm not just listening. I'm not just reading something. And so there's something very, very powerful about video. And there's something extremely powerful about putting yourself out in video. It's, it's the most uncomfortable. It's the most uncomfortable you could possibly be, especially if it's live, um, is to put your, put, put yourself out, uh, on video. Uh, but man, it's, um, it's really, really, really powerful, to see looking back and Gary V says this uh, often that he does the daily V for the recall. I never understood what that meant until like maybe six months ago when I realized that with the daily vlog that I did, the daily bread, that it 100% like the views that it got, the comments that it got made were of no importance to the recall that I now have to be able to pull up that content today and create a video around that content. And what's going to be crazy is 10 years from now when I'm able to pull up that content. Like when you talk about legacy, you talk about this stuff being documented forever. Like, like this video, like this podcast that we're recording yep. is also being recorded on video and this will live on forever. Like, I'll be able to show my grandkids one day about this conversation and they'll be able to see it. They'll be able to hear it. They'll be able to experience it. And there's something to be said for that. Like there's something to be said for the fact that like if my grandfather, if I was able to right now pull up a video from him when he was my age, you know, when he was in the army, you know, and what he was going through at that time, like to think that, 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 that video would not be important to me is ridiculous. Like that, that would cherish that video content. My dad, if I had video of my dad as he was building businesses, you know, going in and out of meetings and what he was going through in his life and his personal life and, you know, growing up with me as a kid. And like, if I was able to watch that content, that's probably all I would watch. <laughs> like yeah. I would watch it every, I would watch it every day. And so to think that this type of content is going to be readily available for our future generations to see, um, you know, it's even to a scary degree. I mean, they're probably gonna be able to put a contact lens and, and sit next to me and experience this conversation in real time. Like it's, it's crazy. Um, but that to me is what we have the ability to go do. And so if, if the technology exists and the technology exists in such a way now where you can do it pretty economically getting started, right. then who would you, then who am I not to document it? Like, who am I not to create all of this content for my future family generations from now, if I knew I could. And like, that's the way, like, you know, when I look at friends and, 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 and other people that, that just don't do any of it, like, I don't judge, but 
man, I just feel like I, I feel bad. Like I'm like, man, they're missing. I'm like, I'm like, this dude is such a good guy and so, has such incredible like, like uh, character and and so much like skill and skills and talents. Like, man, like his family is gonna be really, really, really. Um, it's going to be really unfortunate for his family that they're not going to be able to have the type of stuff that I'm putting together one day, you know, like it's weird to look at it that way. But like when you start thinking about it from a, a the viewpoint of legacy, man, it's, um, it is very deep, very deep that, that uh, it, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, like that's exactly something that I try to tell, uh, people, you know, personally, business-wise clients what you're doing is you are establishing a legacy that's the whole point of it and and you're that dude thank you so much for that and also i do want to say thank you you're the humility the 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 work ethic the the example that you give to your family to your uh to your wife to your uh to i think it's uh, your daughter is that correct yep. yeah your daughter oh, yeah. um yeah. and um is an example for us men for for everyone to what how to live live a life in full um but what it really comes down to it is that you at you do so much and you ask for nothing i don't have much to give but i do <laughs> want to say thank you and my Absolutely. thing is i want to it's very limited uh limited uh hat here of tv yes. films so i'm gonna send Love to you uh, i was gonna ask you i was gonna ask you about the hat because it looks super dope yeah man like, i uh nice. i i i i went and just got it we got to try and work on the brand and everything yeah it looks and, good and uh um, but i want to definitely uh provide you appreciate that provide you this hat of td films awesome um awesome. but uh uh, once again, man, th this was a, an amazing conversation. There were so many levels to this. Uh, honestly, we could probably talk for more, and I'd love to have you back on when, sure. you know, sometime and and uh, discuss even more and dive in deeper because I do love getting in those uh, those deep dives. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. And so. I appreciate you, and uh, kudos to you for um, for what you're doing as well, man, and and for you curating these types of conversations because you know this. I promise you this conversation just gave somebody the uh, audacity to go out there and start documenting and that had nothing to do with me and everything to do with you oh, no. uh, for even for even curating the conversation. And um, it's, you know, it, I think you're of like mind that it is uh, way bigger than us. Um, so I, uh, I just uh, commend you for that. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, and I believe there's that fake music that I put in. Uh, I hear it right now. We're about <laughs> to head off. Guys, please join us for the next episode uh, of Just Create. Uh, who knows who's going to be the next ep uh, guest, but it's going to be exciting. It's going to be rich, and it's just uh, just come on back. Thank you very much, guys. Later. Let me tell you the story About the of the working man